Hi guys and girls, I'm Reef Man, and today I'm going to tell you about calcium and also alkalinity, which is related in our reef aquariums. So calcium is atomic number number 20, and it is an alkaline metal found in the Earth's crust and in every, or at least most, living things. It's actually, uh, it's actually the fifth most abundant element on the Earth. Uh, and also the fifth most abundant element in our bodies. Uh, it's used in our bodies in our neurons in, as part of the neurotransmitter, uh, the chemicals that actually send nerve impulses back and forth. It's used obviously in our bones, uh, probably the, the thing that you think of when you think of calcium in your body. Uh, and similarly in coral and our fish, it's used for similar things. Um, in coral, I mean, anybody who has Acropora corals probably unfortunately has one that looks like this where it's just dead and um, you know you can buy these in the store. Uh, I kept it just as a sort of visual aid, but um, calcium skeleton inside the coral, just like inside your fish, just like inside you. Now calcium skeletons are actually made out of calcium carbonate. And this is important to know only because calcium and alkalinity are very much related in our tank. You measure the amount of calcium in your water. You also measure the amount of alkalinity. The measure that you get of alkalinity is actually the measure of carbonate and bicarbonate in the water. And so when calcium combines the two, or when a coral combines the two into calcium carbonate, it's using both calcium and alkalinity to do that. And that's why in a SPS tank, a small polyp stony coral tank with lots of sort of branching hard coral, it's important to have good levels of calcium and alkalinity. Now calcium should stay between 380 or so up to about 450 parts per million. Alkalinity should be between 7 and 11 dKH. If you go much over either of these, you're either going to really severely burn and probably kill your coral, or you're going to start making limestone in your tank. Um, as these elements become, or as these, these chemicals become more and more concentrated in your reef tank water, they reach a point where they're no longer going to stay in solution in that water. And that's when you're going to get precipitate on like heaters and other hard surfaces in your tank. it will be like a white dusty precipitate. And that is actually basically limestone. Now calcium is a metal. It's a gray metal. It oxidizes quickly in air to turn with a dark um, oxygen, nitrogen oxide layer. And it reacts strongly with water. When you add it to water, it bubbles vigorously. That's actually hydrogen gas coming off. So make sure you're doing this in a well-ventilated place. And then shortly after, you'll see there's a white cloudy, or a white cloudy uh, material forming in that water. That's actually calcium hydroxide, which is better known as caulk or, or lime. Um, caulk wasser is what we use to dose calcium and alkalinity. That's a calcium hydroxide solution. And that's what we're actually seeing in this beaker here. So I mentioned alkalinity, but what is alkalinity? It's not a chemical per se. What it is is a measure of how much acid you can add to water without changing its pH. It's the amount of acid that water can neutralize uh, and remain at the same pH. So in our tanks, it's usually either um, calcium carbonate or sodium bicarbonate. Those are the two common things that you can add that will increase your alkalinity. Um, and your Coral needs to have alkalinity to grow. Um, as I mentioned, that's part of the thing that it uses in its skeleton. Um, coral and algae also uses it. Fish need it just for their metabolism. Um, obviously, as a fish grows, it's going to have a bigger skeleton. Um, as coral grows, there's going to be more skeleton. So over time, as your tank matures, its calcium and alkalinity needs are going to go up. That's why it's important to measure these values on a somewhat regular basis. I wouldn't say every week, but at least every month or two months, you should probably check your calcium and alkalinity just to make sure they're in the right range. And especially if you're dosing it because your needs are going to increase slowly over time. So how can you actually increase the calcium or alkalinity in your tank? Well, luckily, almost always when you dose calcium, you're also going to dose alkalinity. Be it a two-part solution, one is gonna be a calcium solution, the other is going to be maybe sodium bicarbonate solution. Um, or it could be a cockwasser or lime water. Um, that's what I use in my tank. I don't have a huge population of stony corals just yet. Um, things are still growing in. Uh, and so though I have a lot of little frags, I can get away with just dosing cockwasser in my top off water. You might also need, and what I plan on adding in the future is a calcium reactor. And that's where you have some aragonite, which is a calcium uh, mineral. And it's dissolved with CO2 and drips into your tank. And that doses 
both calcium and alkalinity. All of these are balanced calcium alkalinity things. Um, obviously with two part, you can dose just the calcium or just the alkalinity if you need to raise one but not the other. One thing that you can also do if you just need to dose alkalinity is use baking soda. That's actually sodium bicarbonate. If you make a solution of it and add that to your tank, you're going to increase the alkalinity of your tank without increasing the calcium. One teaspoon of baking soda dissolved into 50 gallons of water is going to increase the alkalinity of that water by one dKH. So it's one teaspoon of baking soda will raise 50 gallons of water, one dKH. You can use that in your tank if you have problems with low alkalinity. But remember, calcium, or, yeah, calcium and alkalinity are very much interrelated. If you raise one, you can end up lowering the other and vice versa. It's important to monitor both the values and not just only monitor, say, alkalinity. If you find your tank is chronically low on calcium and alkalinity, you keep adding it, you keep adding it, it's not improving, you're just chronically low, take a look at the magnesium level in your tank. If the magnesium in your tank is very low, there's actually some biological processes that can switch to using calcium, and you'll be using a lot more calcium than you would otherwise be using. So take a look at the magnesium levels of your water and make sure that they're in the right range, which should be around 1300 to 1400 parts per million if you're trying to just match natural seawater. You might see online that you can fix your pH just by adding a buffer solution. The problem is what you're really doing there is just increasing the alkalinity of your water. And that's gonna cause a lot of trouble for you if you're increasing your alkalinity when you didn't need to increase it in the first place. You can definitely burn the tips, the growing tips of your stony coral. You can hurt all sorts of other things in your tank by overdoing alkalinity. So don't make it any more than about 11 on the high end. So I hope you liked this video. Let me know if you have any questions about calcium or alkalinity. It's definitely a complicated subject and one that we just barely scratched the surface of in this video, but I'd be happy to direct you to other resources or, or help you out as best I can. Let me know in the comments what you'd like me to cover next. I have some other chemical ideas for future videos, but I'm curious to see what you guys would be interested in. Till next time, I'll see you then. Bye.